Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about various applications of Magic T Junction. <coughs> so Magic T is generally preferred for three main applications in any transmission lines like your waveguides or any type of communications. First one is there are three main applications generally used. First one is measurement of impedance measurement of impedance and second one is magic T used as a duplexer third one magic T as a mixer so magic T can be used in three different ways it can be used as impedance measurement device or it can be used as a duplexer and it can be used as a mixer so the unknown impedance in the first case we will measure the unknown impedance using the known impedance okay so let us see the first one first case is nothing but <coughs> measurement of measurement of impedance measurement of impedance now let us see how the unknown impedance can be measured using the known impedance <coughs> using the known impedance magic t has been used in the form of a bridge as shown in this figure see it can be used as in the form of a bridge where the impedance can be measured yeah we know that magic t is having four ports whereas in our application to measure the unknown impedance first arm is connected with the first arm is connected with a known or variable impedance that is z1 it is the z1 is nothing but known or variable impedance that is connected the port 1 and the second arm is connected with the unknown impedance which is z2 you can write it as a unknown impedance z2 and third arm is connected with the microwave source. Third arm is nothing but H arm. H arm is given with a source that is microwave source. And fourth arm is connected with the null detector which is E arm. Fourth arm is connected with the null detector which is nothing but which is used to terminate the reflections coming from the any of these devices. See. Uh, first arm first port is connected with known impedance known variable impedance to make the bridge balanced variable impedance and second port is connected with unknown impedance and third port third port second port and first port third port is connected with excitation or source and fourth port is connected with null detector fourth port is connected with null detector ok so using the properties of magic t the power coming from this port 3 entering into the junction that will be equally divided into the port 1 and as well as port 2 
okay that is one of the properties of this magic tea okay the power enters from this port 3 that after reaches this junction that will go into z1 and as well as z2 nothing but towards port 1 and towards port 2 equally that means the power is equally divided at this junction towards this 1 and 2 but no power towards 4 because port 3 and port 4 are isolated ports <coughs> okay port 3 and port 4 are isolated ports and similarly port 1 and port 2 are isolated ports so the power coming out uh, coming inside from port 3 towards this junction will be going towards port 1 and as well as port 2 now let the characteristic impedance characteristic impedance for magic t is z naught okay if row 1 and row 2 are reflection coefficients row 1 and row 2 are reflection coefficients so where the reflection coefficients will be coming from if the characteristic impedance is not equal to the impedance which is connected at the first and second arms okay we know very well we know very well suppose if it is a transmission line this transmission line is terminated with a impedance okay this is some zl and this transmission line is having the characteristic impedance z naught if z naught is equal to zl that means no reflection no reflection suppose if z naught is not equal to zl reflections are existed okay so here what happens we are taking the impedance z naught as the characteristic impedance and z1 z2 are the impedances connected the first and second arms suppose if this characteristic impedance is not equal to z1 and z2 then definitely there will be a reflection from first port and as well as from the second port that's why the signal some the signal which is going towards this z1 will be coming back towards the junction like this again that goes and coming back uh, towards the junction the signal which is coming back towards the junction from port 1 now it goes towards the port 4 and similarly from port 2 again goes towards the port 4 because that is coming from port 1 means uh, the inside the junction what it treats uh, the signal is coming from port 1 inside the junction what it treats uh, the signal is coming from jet uh, port 2 so the signals which are coming from port 1 and port 2 are again mixed up together and goes towards the null detector this is the actual phenomena okay so whatever the reflections that are occurred in the port 1 and port 2 are given as row 1 and row 2 are the reflections then the reflection then the reflection from port 1 is row 1 into what is that where the signal is coming from the signal is originally coming from a3 a3 incident wave is occurred at third port by root 2 and similarly the reflection from port 2 is row 2 a3 by <coughs> root 2 okay so the resultant wave reaching at the null null port and i think but which is at the port 4 that is given by so at port 4 at port 4 the resultant signal is equal to 1 by root 2 of 1 by root 2 of this one row 1 a3 minus of 1 by root 2 of 1 by root 2 of row 2 a3 see 
the power coming from port 1 and the power coming from port 2 these two are going towards e arm e arm we know that first and second ports are out of phases first and second ports are out of phase to uh, when we are taking the e arm into consideration that's why one is applied with positive one is applied with negative and again half of the 3 db power will be going towards this port 3 from port 1 and as well as port 2 so that's why one by root 2 will come okay if we simplify this again if we multiply this 1 by 2 like it is 1 by 2 so if you take 1 by 2 common and a3 also you can take it common a3 then row 1 minus row 2 row 1 minus row 2 so we can simply equate it to row 1 minus row 2 is equal to 0 and row 1 is equal to row 2 for perfect balance for perfect balance so but we know that row 1 reflection coefficient at the first port is equal to z1 minus z0 by z1 plus z0 and row 2 reflection coefficient at the port 2 is z2 minus z0 by z2 plus z0 so as row 1 is equal to row 2 we can equate these two equations so z1 minus z0 by z1 plus z0 equal to z2 minus z0 by z2 plus z0 okay so z1 is equal to z2 after simplifying we will get z1 is equal to z2 so in this way the unknown impedance can be calculated by varying the known impedance z1 okay now the second case is magic t as a duplexer we know very well what is a duplexer what is a duplexer duplexer is a device which is used to separate the signals from transmitter to the receiver and as well as during reception the antenna signal will go towards the receiver it should not go into the transmitter so we should know first what is a duplexer duplexer is a device used to isolate the transmitted and received signals the transmitted and received signals this type of case generally occurs when we are using a single antenna for both transmission and reception okay see now the <coughs> port 1 is given with the receiver port 2 is connected with the transmitter port 3 is match load and port 4 is antenna take a con condition when during transmission what happens during transmission what happens during transmission the transmitted signal enters into this junction now the signal coming from the second port goes towards the port 3 and as well as port 4 because port 1 and 2 are isolated ports in the magic t the most important feature of this magic t is though 1 and 2 are opposite to each other those two are isolated ports and port 3 and 4 are again isolated ports okay this is the main feature why we can use this duplexer uh, magic t as a duplexer so ports 1 and 2 are isolated ports and similarly ports 3 and 4 are again isolated ports this is the main feature why we can use these in different ways so that signal the transmitted signal which enters into this junction goes in towards antenna and towards match load of course match load is a load that can absorb this entire signal and the signal goes towards this antenna okay that will be radiated into the free space that is fine okay during reception which will be activated antenna antenna will collect the signal and the signal enters from the antenna towards the junction so towards the junction that goes towards the receiver that goes towards the 
receiver and very leakage amount of signal that goes towards the transmitter okay so the signal will be received by the receiver so in this way the transmitted signal should not enter into the receiver that is the main purpose of the duplexer <coughs> now the third application is magic t as a mixer magic t as a mixer what it will do mixer is nothing but it will add the incoming signals mixer is nothing but it will add the incoming signal see local oscillator will generate a signal local oscillator will generate a signal and antenna incoming signal is coming out from this one that is received signal will be coming from this antenna we know the received signal is an rf signal the received signal is an rf signal and the local oscillator produces a local oscillator signal which is nothing but a uh, high frequency signal okay now these two are mixed together to produce an if signal intermediate signal okay the rf signal received rf signal can be converted into intermediate signal only by mixing with the local oscillator signal that can be possible with the help of this magic t okay so the received signal received signal which is in rf form can be converted into intermediate frequency by adding a local oscillator frequency local oscillator frequency suppose if any leakage power is there at this junction that will be going towards this match load okay so this is what the main applications of this magic t three applications are there magic t as a mixer magic t as a duplexer and magic t can be used to detect the unknown impedance with by comparing the known impedance